hand Sly in Vietnam, the bullet in the head Bobby O did on Drano on the night that he was wet They were two more friends of mine Two more friends that died Those are From a cell in the twos Judy jumped in front of a subway train Eddie got slid in the jugular vein And Eddie, I miss you more than all the others All right, guys, welcome. How's it going? I think I think we're we're good today. I mean, let me look at stuff. Uh, it seems the Twitch issues weren't just me, so I don't know if that makes me happy or just as sad. I'm not entirely sure, but so far so good. Uh, we're gonna hang out for a little bit with Dave Marsh, uh, one of the co-creators of the original Shadowgate. We're gonna play a little bit of that, talk to him a little bit, possibly play the new Shadowgate, um, show off some changes and so on and so forth. So it should be good. And then in a couple hours, uh, get ready, we will be having our WWE 2K15 uh, simulated tournament. So that should be amazing. All right, so 
Time is short. Let me grab uh, Dave on the line here, and uh, we'll get all this this goodness started. Hello. Hey. Hey, what's happening, Dave? Not much. Just getting ready for a big launch tomorrow. Yeah, right on, right on. Well, it is a it is a pleasure to have you here. Um, yeah, we, small crowd so far, but that's how it starts. Uh, if if you wouldn't mind, maybe introducing yourself. Like, I know who you are. I'm excited to have you here. But for maybe uh, you know some of the viewers, if you just want to kind of intro yourself, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, sure. Uh, so let's see. I. Um... I started making uh, my first game, which was Shadowgate, in 1985. Um, before that, I was doing, um, I was just playing around with the Apple II and, um, you know, just getting an idea of how that worked with graphics when I met somebody who uh, had just finished working on um, a game called Deja Vu, A Nightmare Comes True, which was a um, 1940s kind of gumshoe detective adventure yep. using this new uh, Windows engine. And, uh, and so I, um, I basically worked on Shadowgate with my partner, Carl Ruloffs. And um, from there, uh, we ported Shadowgate Deja Vu Uninvited in this game called Deja Vu 2 to about 10 different platforms, just doing the art and design. Nice. Uh, then the company changed directions because side-scrollers were big, and the, uh, uh, the SNES came out. And so worked on a number of Looney Tunes games for Warner Brothers, and then... Um, Oh, really? Which ones? I was a big fan of the Looney Tunes games for us. Uh, yeah, um, I, I created this game called Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally, okay. uh, which was a lot of fun for Sunsoft and Daffy Duck and the Martian Mi Marvin Missions, and uh, or Daffy Duck and the Martian Missions, and Bugs Bunny Rampid, Rampage, and then um, went on to make games for the Turbo Graphics, which was interesting. And uh, nice. And again, there, I gotta ask, what did you? I, I was people every time I, I bring up the Turbo Graphics, nobody has any clue as to what I'm talking about. But that was yeah. actually one of my favorite systems. Uh, what did you work on there? Well, I worked on this game called Shapeshifter, and uh, which is a pretty fun game. You could sh shapeshift into like five different creatures, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, worked on. Um, I mean, that was primarily my that one, but I also did a, a, a number of uh, uh, the Sherlock Holmes mysteries we put on the Turbo Graphics called Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, which we just re-released. Uh, oh, cool. Okay. And then I went off and uh, we got bought by Viacom and made uh, Beavis and Butthead games. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, because because uh, your your career is not really complete until I do that. You, wait, did you work on on the ones for like Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo then? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Up the PC, yeah. Gotcha. And then, um, and then I uh, got in the massively multiplayer industry. I was working on some uh, some games there, and then I uh, I went off in the casino industry for like seven years, making slot machines. And now, uh, and then I started Zojoy a couple of years ago. Bought back the rights to my my games. Kickstarted Shadowgate, and uh, there you go. Right on. So, what what made you want to get back to kind of your roots, so to speak, with Shadowgate? Was it just? Has this been something you wanted to do for a while, or? Just... Yeah. Well, I I had been working on Shadowgate on and off, um, you know, for different platforms. Um, I helped my friend uh, Eugene Evans at Infinite Ventures get the rights to it back in the day, and and uh, every every now and then, like when Kemco, who did the NES version, um, came up, they said, "Hey, you know, we want to do the color Game Boy version," so I worked on that. Okay. And then I'd work on a phone version of some of the games, and then we would, you know, it just kind of kept cropping up, and Carl and I kept redesigning and talking and everything. And But really, to be honest, uh, to be perfectly honest, it wasn't until I saw how some games were doing on Kickstarter that I said, why not us? Yeah. Why, oh, yeah. why can't, why not, uh, you know, get to go ahead and reimagine some of the games we're working on? So yeah. it's good. Yeah, and that's awesome. Shadowgate is one of my all-time favorites. It's it, it seems to be a love or hate game. I loved it. <laughs> um, I used to actually speed run the the NES version, which was yeah. l long ago, but uh, definitely one of my faves. Yeah, it's it's a pleasure to have you here, man. I am absolutely excited as hell to meet you. Yeah, yeah. You know the the, the NES version was a was a, a really interesting thing because um, when Kemco came to us, the Japanese company Kemco, and they said, "Hey, we want to go ahead and do the NES version," we said, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." And uh, and they did a great job on the port, and, and uh, you know we worked on we worked uh, on it together, and it was it worked really well. But it was one of those games where <laughs> when we first created it, we kind of didn't know what we were doing as far as um, how to design a good adventure game and how to how to make the cut puzzles not right. obtuse. And uh, 
But, um, you know, it really resonated with people. Uh, I still get emails from people that say it scared the crap out of me when I was eight years old. On the <laughs> right, and, right. And, uh, and that's cool. That's fine. And so, uh, yeah, cool. Now, I, I remember um, one, of the, one of my biggest things with Shadowgate was uh, there was a part where you could waste a couple items on a certain snake and kind of bone yourself through the entire game. Now, was that... Yeah. Uh, how did you balance some things like that? Like, back in the day, you know, there was no... No real like internet, no game facts, no yeah, yeah. no way to like kind of figure this out. Were you ever worried that you know people were just going to get stuck and just frustrated, or was that just kind of part of the design? Yeah, and uh, no, I mean it wasn't in, in you know our intent. We had very small teams when we created those games, um, and uh, but we knew that you know the part then was we just said uh, look, let's give people the option to do anything. And, um, you know, adventure games have obviously, uh, changed. Uh, they have, um, I see you're playing the Apple two GS version yep, right now. Yep. Um, and I already died from my torch going out. So. Uh, excellent. <laughs> there you go again. And so, uh, it's probably a good idea to light a torch. Um, but, uh, you know, part of it was, you know, adventure games have changed and, uh, you spend a lot more time, uh, you know, you walk up to somebody and you, you click on them and they, Say, hey, what do you want? I need a duck. And uh, then you go out and find a duck, and you bring a duck to them, and they say, hey, great, here's a gem. And then you take the gem to somebody else. And so back in those days, um, you know, we made it so that uh, you had the option to do whatever you wanted. So we gave you a whole, you know, as you can see here, a whole list of uh, commands. And if you wanted to go ahead and use the uh, the torch on yourself, we're going to let you do it. Uh, So in the new Shadowgate, we actually give you both options. if you want to play with a command wheel, um, we make it so that it is, uh, you know, it's based on, you know, the situation you in, you're in. Uh, only those commands will come up. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and play with the retro command system, we support that as well. Okay. Very cool. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I swear I used to know this game. All right. All right. Do you remember how to? Did you like? No, no. Use operate torch on the unlit. There you go. Okay. And now is it <laughs> is it now uh, I, I remember you can burn the rug in here. Is it operate torch on ah, there it rug. is. Okay. And that did nothing. But just okay. say operate operate torch, yeah. On the rug. It's now unlocked. All right. Progress. There we go. There we go. All right. I remember open the book. Do not take the book. That's in the next room. You have to unlock the door in front of you. Yep, got that. You're gonna be on like it's about a twenty second delay or so. Ah, well, thanks for letting me know. Yep, <laughs> no worries, no worries. So now, uh, for people that don't know, uh, basically the game is getting updated tomorrow, and if you pick up Shadowgate, you will get classic Shadowgate as well as classic Deja Vu. I believe all versions are going to be upgraded? Well, yeah. So we really uh, we really wanted to say thanks. I mean, it's, it is Thanksgiving after mm-hmm, all, mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. case you didn't know this. But... Um, we wanted to say thanks to everybody, and uh, and so we're doing a, a big sale on Steam tomorrow. The game is going to be on sale, first of all, the new game. And then if you buy it on Steam uh, tomorrow and uh, for the next couple days, and um, you will get the uh, the retro version of Shadowgate, the original uh, 128K Mac version, which is the black and white version. Right. And you'll get the Apple II GS version. And then we're also giving uh, away uh, Deja Vu the 1940s detective murder mystery, both as Mac and 2GS as well. That's awesome. And um, and so, and then anybody that bought the game on Steam, uh, the new Shadow Game on Steam, will uh, have that uh, sitting in their uh, their swag folder. Oh, very cool. Okay. All right. Let's get back here. I'm going to eat dinner while you're talking. Is yeah, that hey, cool? that's totally fine. Yeah, man, this is a very relaxed show. You're fine. <clears throat> Okay, doors open. I think all of these can be opened right away, right? Yeah. Uh, you're going to want to operate the torch on the left. See, wasn't it? Oh. I, the Okay, I knew there was something with one of those torches. You have played this game before, right? I have. I, I swear <laughs> I have. Honestly, not even too long ago. Yeah, we still. I still see speed runs on the uh, on the NES version. I see it all the time, you know. And people will speed run it for charity, which is very cool. Mm-hmm. And so I just recently got a guy who sp- uh, speed run uh, Shadowgate on, on NES in Sweden, and the name of our company is Zojoy. And um, but he said, "This is for my friends at Zojoy." So that's, cool. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's what we call the company now is Zojoy. 
No. Oh, Kara, the American Thanksgiving is Thursday. So it's always the Thursday, uh, last Thursday of the month in um, in uh, in November, where we uh, celebrate um, conquering and uh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. doing terrible things. All right. And now it's Torch on the Wraith, I thought, yeah? Yeah, but you don't have the right torch. Is it the... Yeah. Uh, that's right. All right. The special torch. Uh, flame seems weak. Torch is charred and useless. Okay. Let's go back. Kind of like the my, my the last 20 years of my life. <laughs> that's sad. Um, this torch. Examine. Bad batch of oil. Smells terrible. Seems to be stuck securely in the wall. Let's go this way. Oh God! Did my torch go out? Oh my! No. God. All right. Well, I'm yeah, it, it did. Like. It did. Would you like to have another try? Yes. Hold on. Jeez. So save often. The new yeah. Shadowgate. Yeah. The new Shadowgate torches are still. It depends. We have four difficulty levels. Oh, what am I doing? If you play the normal level, I don't believe your torch ever goes out. Okay. And so that's for people that like a more casual gameplay. And it's it's much harder to die. Uh, and, and as you go up in in you know in difficulty levels, the puzzles change and become more difficult, and uh, and torches become a, a big deal. But if if you're if you're not into that, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, we want to offer uh, something for every type of gamer. Not everybody had played Shadowgate before, so uh, it's really a great way to uh, to. To, to play the game. You might play it on, on casual mode and beat it, and then you come back in later, and you up the difficulty level, and all of a sudden, you know, what you did before to, to get through that part of the game no longer works, so you got to solve some new puzzle. So, it's pretty neat. Yeah, I did notice that, and there's, like, huge changes. I, I didn't really expect that, which was really cool. Like, every time you can play it, like, eight different ways, which is really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would say that we updated about 80 to 90% of the puzzles, uh, we just basically went through them and said, "Look, this makes no sense." <laughs> and uh, you know, this was you know us being kids in 1985. And then uh, you know, we updated the puzzles and we just said, "This is much more fun. This makes sense." And a lot of it is just, "Why are there creatures in this in this in this castle? And who's behind it? And what's going on?" Uh, you'll see it later in the game. There, there's always a woman in the tower that turned into a werewolf. And we always said, you know, when we went back and looked at it and said that. You know that was pretty random. Yeah, you know, which it, which it kind of was. Yeah, why was she there? What was? Why was she there? And on? so we we created a whole backstory behind her now and what she is, and she's a lieutenant, and uh, it's it's pretty fun. So, and of course in these games, look, this was coming out on a on a single floppy disk, right? And uh, uh, and so we had we didn't have any music because we couldn't you know we couldn't fit it. Uh, we had very few sound effects, but it's a cool fun game to play. And then when we redid it, I mean, we just did a whole massive interactive score to the point that even like just we, I think we have 10 different um, tunes, but each one of them has six different um, uh, tracks to the tune. And so we turn them on and turn them off as the game goes. And as you saw, you know, as to build suspense, we bring in cellos and choruses. And yep. it's pretty, you know, it was kind of like a you know, hungry man fin finally realizing that, you know, he can, he, you know, he's not subject to just eating hamburgers. So, you know, without the constraints of some of these bits, uh, like uh, cartridges or whatever, uh, we just went crazy. Right on. Yeah, I suppose now was that, I, I suppose that was a pretty big challenge back in the day too, just the limitations of space in general. It was crazy because everything, everything, and it's still this way a bit, but everything came down to compression, right? Right. So, you know, as you see um, here, You'll see that uh, probably a little bit more. You'd see it if you showed the Mac version, the black and white version. But um, patterns were a big thing. Compressors, uh, compression in in graphics looks, and it's, it's the same in music and audio. But it looks for like patterns. And so if I had a room with a lot of the same patterns in it, it compresses very well because it finds like patterns. Here. Uh, you know that was always a, a challenge because we were always like, well, what am I going to do? As far as uh, you know, getting this uh, you know fifty rooms to fit on a disc, you'd right, have right. A lot of patterns in there, you know. So it was a real challenge. Kids yeah. these days don't know about it. They they don't they don't. 
<laughs> that's what I tried to explain to everybody, like, yeah, back when, like, lemmings took up, you know, like, ten floppies and, oh, yeah. Number crunchers. Number crunchers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and we were a small company. I mean, there weren't many of us, and so we would have to, um, you know, we were, you know, for the most part, we were on one floppy, and it was, it was, uh, it was crazy, but, you know, it really teaches you once you, once you start creating games and making games that, have a really huge constraints it's easier then to know how to build up so as the cartridges got bigger and stuff and and we or we've shipped them more floppies we knew what the constraints were rather than saying you know starting with a big game and then trying to shrink it down so right. so now what were like you know getting into this what were some of your inspirations game wise if if any well i um so this was 85 when I first got in, and the only games I was playing were things like Zork. Okay, very cool. And uh, text-based games. I played a lot of... There were there were actually some multiplayer games that were out back in the, um, in the early 80s um, that would connect... You connect with a phone to a server at a local college, and so we played a lot of text-based oh, wow. games. And those were things like, if you know any MUDs, there were things like... Um, which everybody probably knows it stands for multi-user dungeons. Yep. And, and it was the kind of thing that, it, you know, it just, the text came up and said, you're standing in a field and you just said, go north, go north, go north, go north, go west, you know, and you came across a monster and said, you know, you've come across a gelatinous cube. What do you want to do? And you right. would say one equals run, two equals fight. And you progress on a level and, you know, you hit for 25 hit points. It hits you for five hit points. You, you keep just doing that. But those were the games. Um, we also played a bunch of uh, Apple II stuff. There was a game called Venture that we played a lot of. But um, they're just uh, – and then we were at the arcade a ton. That's what we just lived at the arcade playing. Yeah, yeah I definitely miss arcades. Oh, well, good thing I saved. All right, there we go. So, uh, yeah, so those were those were kind of the uh, things that we uh, created and uh and you know worked against but then the, in, in the early days on the mac there were very few games uh dark castle was a game we played uh we pl the wizardry series came out oh, which wizardry. was just yes. great fun that was like my first rpg with graphics that i ever played it was it was so much fun they did mm -hmm. such a good job and uh we played a lot of that um there were there were other games that uh that had come after that like dungeon um Dungeon Master and, and other things, but those early days when it was black and white, there were just very few games out there. The guys who created Mist actually created this little fun game called Manhole. Do you know what? Do you remember that? I, I that one does not sound familiar. So that was just a wacky adventure where anything you cooked on, you might go into like the sink, the sink or something. It was just crazy. Okay. But uh, there wasn't a whole lot out, and uh, what was out, you know, you went to these software stores and and just you know, hoped that they had something new out there. It was great. And hoped it worked. So Right, yeah. Man, do I sound old. Hey, I'm, I'm I'm not super old, but 38. I've, I've been around. I've been around. But yeah, Wizardry, I, I, I go back and actually play that every so often. Like, And it's so different now. You know, nowadays everything's mapped out for you. You know, you have auto maps, things like that. Like, it's... it's um. It's different to go back to basically, you know, graph paper. Oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, it's uh, it is tough. I mean, I've tried to, you know, I've downloaded like the Mame emulator, mm -hmm. and I've tried to play some of those games, and um, they sound cooler in your head than you remember them. Oh yeah, always, always. Um, or you know, or they sound cool as you remember them, but when you play it, I mean, there are some games like arcade games like Berserk and. And uh, Wizards of War and other things that were a blast and are still a blast, but um, it's really tough to go back and play Muds now and just say go north and you found a chest. What do you wish to do? So after playing MMOs and everything else under the sun, so right. But there's still a you know there's still a healthy market for adventure games, um, especially on tablets. And um, you know, we were in a funky situation, Carl and I, when we when we started talking about Shadowgate because Shadowgate, uh, there's expectations about the game and what people, you know, what they remember. And if we had come out with this, you know, a radically different game uh, or something that, uh, well, either if we had come out with another port, uh, we were not interested in doing that. 
And if we had come out with something that was radically different, um, people wouldn't like it. Right. So we had to try to find that that sweet spot, which was to give them, you know, a, a user interface that work that is both as they remember it and more modern, uh, and also create puzzles that uh, obviously, in, in the case of Shadowgate, make more sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it's always you know to bring something back because even if you you created it. You know, people will say, don't mess with my game, right? And so yeah, yep. that's why we kind of didn't want to do another port. And we've done 10 or 12 ports of the game already, and it's just like, all right. I think the last one I did was on the Palm Pilot. So. Oh, wow. There you go. So now as far as ports go uh, with these games, what, what was... I guess what was, like, your, your favorite version of this? Is it the old ones, the NES one, anything else? Like, which one would you say would be, like, the best port? Um. Well, obviously the NES was the most popular. All right. Um. I have obviously in my heart, I really love the black and white run because of what what it was at the time and doing it in my first game, right? Okay. 30, yeah. Years ago. So it's hard to to argue with that. Um. You know, as far as ports go, I I guess it would be the NES only because it's just such great memories. Um. When Kenko came to us and said we can we can do this, and we were we were skeptical because um, how are they going to handle all the commands and everything with the controller? Um, and they did a pretty good job of that. And just the translations, because the translations went from English and they translated it to fit in cert certain character counts. It's like you know the first tweets, right? And then. And then to translate, they translated into Japanese, and then translated back into English. And Carl and I spent more time translating the game and laughing at some <laughs> of the translations. The translations, but, yeah, I bet. Yeah, because we get things like that to to the to the guys, and and I didn't mean much of anything, but to us, we laughed at. I mean, I mean, just like like just goofy kid stuff. Like uh, if you did something wrong in Shadowgate, it would say something like. You know, uh, you can't do that, um, or that's impossible to do. And they would always put in, you pulled a boner. So no. they would say, <laughs> that's over awesome. and over, they would say, you pulled a boner. And we would say, you know what, you probably want to use a different a different or, thing for yeah. that. <laughs> And then, and then they would come back and they would change something else, but not the word boner, right? <laughs> so they would say, and, and we would have to explain it. And so of instead course, of they change like pulled, so you squeezed a boner this time. Exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> so, and so we would laugh at it. We just thought it was great. And they would, um, you know, they would come back and uh, say, uh, okay, that's fine. And they were really, they were really great. And, and so when I... When I was working on the new Shadowgate, I contacted Kemco and I said, I can't imagine, because I know a couple of the... The guys I worked with there had gone off or had died and weird stuff. I mean, so I went back to them and I said, look, you know, for our new Shadowgate, we want to use the, the Nest Tunes. We want to offer a okay. retro mode, which is what we did, right? So you can play the new Shadowgate with retro pixelated, pixelated graphics. Actually, last time we showed this off, I did that. The music was oh, so good. Yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's tough to play, right? Because it's a filter. So you kind of, that's why you can, having the key toggle is great for that. You can play it with the music. You can play it, and we tried to, you know, make them one to one to the rooms that people remember. You could do the uh, the text that comes up with the the scroll, the quill, and then you can go ahead and do transitions that were like it. And so, I just went to Kemco and I said, "Look, you know, we're doing this. Uh, I had a great relationship with you guys twenty some years ago. Could we do it? Again? You know, I'd love to build that relationship again. Right. And could I get the rights to the music to use them?" And they just came back and said, "Sure, that's great." And then they came back and said, look, we want to put the, the NES version back out on the uh, virtual console here in Japan. And I said, let's do that. Mm. And uh, and then just recently, uh, I'll just share it with you. Just recently, um, I'm working with them on obtaining the um, uh, so to, to get a license to um, re-release the NES and Ga Game Boy Color versions. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about it. So with licensing like that, I never understand how that, that works. So basically... You created the game and sold the license to somebody so they could do the port and then had to get it back, or is that totally well, wrong? No, 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 it's, it's not too far. But so I was still working at Viacom, which bought ICOM, which is the company that I used to work for to make the games. Okay. Um, I arranged a deal between Viacom and a friend of mine to get the rights to Shadowgate Deja Vu, Deja Vu 2, Uninvited. Um, 
are Sherlock Holmes games and this game called Dracula Unleashed, which were some um, full motion video games. And we worked on some products and together and later. And then, um, then my friend went off and he was running an EA studio for a while. And I just contacted him a couple years ago and said, I'd like to get the rights back because I'd like to put them out. And so we worked out a deal. So I got the rights back. And then on things like um, the, the Nest version, uh, Kenko actually did the graphics and the um, and uh, the music for it. And so I just went back to them and said I'd like to now, rather than you licensing Shadowgate for me, I just want to license the rights to use uh, the work that you did. Okay. And so it was, uh, and they're very cool. So it worked out. It worked out really well. And so we would just want to keep a good relationship going and try to figure out how to how to leverage um, these these great adventure games. All right. Okay. Now in here, um, I remember Dragon Room. It's the shield, the helmet, and the hammer. It's Is spear. that right? Now you don't need the helmet. You, you don't need, need the spear. helmet. Oh god. You need the spear and the hammer. Did I? Can I? Can I get one more thing out of here? I don't know. It, you might be saying. One more burst will probably do you in. Good. Let's get out. All right. Got it. I don't know how I always forget that one. Like, what the hell was I supposed to grab? Um, nope. We're not going to go down there until we learn e -pour. <gasps> No, torches. God bless it. Torches go out fast in this old version. Holy yeah. God. Yeah, which is something we massively tweaked in the new one. In fact, the new in this one, uh, torches flicker very very quickly momentarily and you can't if you don't read the text you won't know uh, oh one, i just read that okay a torch flickers more time. I, in the new one as your torch goes out is getting lower obviously the torch on the screen is getting smaller right yep getting smaller and smaller just i, I think the nest version did that too but the screen starts to get darker so you know when you need to do it right and then we decided like the Nest version, we're going to start playing different music, torch going out music. Yep. yep. So we do that as well. So again, we you know made a ton of changes, and of course we've got like sixty achievements in the game now, things you can do. Um, so much. Uh, we should probably show a little of that game when you when, when you have time. But yep. So we'll much. We'll uh, you know, changes um, just to just to bring the the game. You know, just audio and and particle effects and. The storyline makes sense, you know, all that. All right, where was this wraith? Not there. Okay, that's the cave. I found my special torch. I forgot about that. Right. Ah, you didn't pull a boner. I, d I did not pull a boner, no. That's actually amazing. Now, was this... This is the skull key, right? Operate. Bam. Door is now unlocked. There we go. <laughs> oh, don't give me your grief. Let's go. Ah, the sling and the sword. Wow, it's coming back. Sling won't yeah, fit. You gotta go all the way back to the closet and unlock it. There you go. All right, small cramped closet. So now at this point, I can get rid of the shield, right? Do I need that anymore? I don't think I do. Oh, nor the helmet. Nor the helmet. That's right. That's right. And the only reason you want the broom is because you may be asked a riddle about it, right? Uh, yeah. And it's all coming back to you. It is. Well, and that's the thing. I just played through the NES version, like, what, maybe a couple months ago? It wasn't that long ago, but I'm already forgetting things. Hey, um, this is my programmer. I'm going to put you on hold for a quick sec, okay? Sure, yeah. I'll literally be right back. Oh, no. Did I die? Ugh, my goodness, all right, Just flipping torches. Thou art dead. Where was I? I gotta keep an eye out for that, that little message there. Nope, oh, oh, nope, nope, not there, not there. Oh god, where the fart? Did it say, did it say anywhere? Did I miss it? <laughs> It's gonna happen quick here. Oh, where the hell is the wreath? I get so spun around in this. Is it this way? Nope. Was it that way? Was it? Was it over here? Was it up there? There it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
Uh, sorry about that. That was my programmer. Oh, you're fine. I wanted to make sure that the uh, retro versions were available for everybody on Steam tomorrow and uh, just, you know, crazy making sure it's there. So <laughs> Take that. All right, let's save it. Um, we'll grab these torches. Oh, I can't grab torches. All right. I'll just light like 80 of them. That's fine. Yeah, hey, I'm looking on Skype. Is that your dog? Is yeah, that your... yep, yep. That's Shinobi, my dog. How old? Uh, five right now. All right, all right, rock and roll. Yeah, he's, uh, he's good stuff sometimes, sometimes. So get rid of that shield and helmet. You don't need them. Yep, not that. Uh... No, you need the uh, the cloak there. I don't know if you've already done that. Have you can't tell us it's trying to delay. Yep, got it. Oh, I'm gonna have to get rid of a torch, which I don't want to do. Um, because you've got torch, your your torch, uh, you got torch problems, don't you? I do, I do. Now, the alcove does not catch fire. Yeah, that's great. I understand. Good um, job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And grab this cloak. No, no, not the cloak. I suppose I don't need magic torch anymore. Nope. Let me get rid of you. Take you. Oh, come on now. Work with me. You really only need one torch lit. But apparently you uh, you enjoy lighting torches. I do. I do. Well, now it just got me so, like, nervous. Like, um, okay. And what is this now? Hey, Fury Fire, that exactly looks like his dog. Does that not look like your dog? No, that's actually one of uh, my, my subscription emotes. Um, oh, yeah. all right. That all is right. him. That is him. Uh Let's um, let's open this, make a little more progress, and then we can. Oh, Epor, my favorite. Why don't you just read this a few times, or not? Dang it! I was gonna read it all. Operating rope, no effect. Too much stuff. Parchment. I know I need one of these bottles for water, I think. It's labeled Goo Gun. Oh, right. well, who doesn't need Goo Gun? Nobody. Everybody needs it. I swear, wasn't that the deal? You just read the sign a few times? Or is that in a different version? Or am I just totally... Uh, you need to speak to the rope. Uh... Silly man. You did pull an E4. Yeah. Ah, beautiful. All right. Oh, so E4 didn't make it into the remake because we didn't like it. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I don't remember that. It's actually in the re remake. We actually do an homage to it. You can actually read E4 on, on the side, but um, it look, you know, we were like... We were 20, and we were making games, and, and what we played was Dungeons and Dragons. Um, um, we were we were making you know Dungeons and Dragons games, and we just uh, you know, <laughs> every now and then we designed a puzzle that didn't make any sense, and right. that was it. So both of these keys are used. I can get rid of you guys. Grab this jar of Google. Oh come on. Yeah. You know, I'd already be done with this game. I just want you to know that. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I bet. I bet. So what is it? Now, is there a standard, like, an inventory max in here? Like, is it a certain amount of items, or is it more on yeah. space? Yeah, you okay. can only carry a certain amount, which we did away with in the new game. Oh, you're, you're, it looks like your torch is getting weak. Um, he, uh... Yeah, it, we it, it's it's the kind of thing that you know you can only carry so much, and so again, it was a limit. You have to be thinking about. I don't take everything. I have to decide if this is worth taking or not. So okay. in the new game, we decided to do away with that. All right, this is actually one of my favorite deaths right here. Let me let me save this one. I didn't see in the new version either. The unless maybe it was a difficulty I was playing on, but which one are we talking about? The the, the, the spectral mirror. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
It's in a new game. It's is it? a hidden okay. death. There's a hidden death. But we have about 10 different hidden deaths. So there's certain deaths you can unlock. And um, now, There's achievements cool. for those as well, right? Yeah, okay. For like finding all the deaths. Yeah, there, again, there's 60 of them. Everything That's from... Nuts. From, you know, from um, finding five torches to, um, you know, to solving the game to lighting every fight, everything on fire. Yeah, okay. Again, 60 of them. It's, it's pretty crazy. A lot of fun. And, and for adventure games, I think achievements are good because, you know, there's, there is a limited replay value. But so uh, achievements is one thing we did. Another one I, I already mentioned was the uh, doing the... Um, the uh, 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 difficulty levels. Uh oh. Well, maybe we'll get to the new game now because uh, I just I pulled a boner. You did. You pulled a boner. I did. Uh, my hammer's done, and I think we're stuck at this point. Now, was there any indication? Like here, would you? How did you like? Is there any explanation? Like, could you ever get? We're, we're pretty much done at this point, right? In what With, way? Without being able to open up this middle door without the hammer. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why you save the game really often. Right. I accidentally where it said, "Oh, would you like to save your changes before loading a new game?" I said yes, and well, Silly. that was a boner. All right. You did. Never <laughs> go away. I pulled a boner. All right. Let me get the new one set up here and take me just two minutes. Well, that's what I, I really loved about uh, the new version as well, is like the enhanced artwork, stuff like that. Because back in the day, it really was based on a lot of, you know, your imagination, which was cool. But it's a really neat thing to see like, oh, this is what this was kind of supposed to look like. You know, you get a better representation, so to speak. Right. All right. Let me let me do game capture. Bear with me one second. Sorry if, I'm, uh, if I was a little distracted there. Again, programmers. Oh, that's uh, fine. That's fine. Texting me. Texting me, telling me that uh, I need to resolve a problem, which uh, is never ending. Uh, of course. No, no worries. Like, like I was saying, I, you know, this is new to a lot of people, but these sessions are just, they're laid back. We just want to show off the game, you know, get some people on, have a good time. So, no, it's, it is all good. Excellent. I did a, um, I did a panel at a Comic-Con in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, they said, look, this is last second. We'd like you to come talk about Kickstarter. Uh, I said that's fine, and I said, but I gotta tell you, you're the last panel of the day mm. on the last day, and you're gonna go up against some. They're gonna reshow Tron or something to everybody, right. and I they just want to pre warn me, but I just wanted to go because I get into a comic con for free, and uh, and I want to go ahead and see a bunch of panels. Um, anyway, there were. Uh, <laughs> Let's just say that it, there were a lot of seats uh, available. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we we did a panel for like trying to promote. I used to work for Destructoid.com, and um, I, ran, I love Destructoid. Ran the live channel over there, and so we had like a, a Detroit TV panel, you know, trying to explain what we do, who we are, and yeah, it was um, very roomy, so to speak. <laughs> it was like. On one end, you know, I, it was cool because, you know, huge crowds would have probably made me a little nervous, but then the small crowd was kind of like, well, all right. <laughs> uh, it's good for public speaking. It? <clears throat> right. It was, it, was, uh, it was right. All right, what are we doing? All right, we are jumping in to the new Shadow Gates. So now, if I go new game, now this is uh, something that I I didn't have well explained to me. So the difference between normal and classic, what is what is that? Right. So normal is uh, for those that have never played an adventure game or a first-person adventure game before. Um, the torches live uh, are live forever. Yeah. You won't okay. die very much. Um, the hints are super hinty. I mean, super like <laughs> in, like in your not face, hinty, like yeah. in your face. Um, and uh, classic is more for people that have played Shadowgate. And if you click on that, you'll see what it says. Um, for people that know first-person adventure games, and there. We give you three difficulty levels. Hey, this is, I know Shadowgate, I don't remember it very well, or I don't remember playing first person adventure games well, but I have done before, I want to try the easiest. Right. And then I want to try the middle, and then I want to try the hard. And then you can turn on uh, Iron Man mode if you want, if you think you're hardcore. And, and that's, uh, that's permadeath, right? Just, or no yeah, saving, no, no nothing? That, or... Yeah, no save games. <clears throat> so. Let's 
Let's, uh, let me see here. Let's go, let me try normal. I don't think I've done normal. Let me try normal. All right, that's cool. That's good. It's a good place to start. Now, this is kind of funky because I got this delay, so. Right, yeah, yeah. I'd like you to fix that. I'd like you to fix the delays. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Twitch. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to Twitch. So now this too, did you always um, like have a backstory in mind for this and just weren't able to do it with the resources, you know, back in the day? Because this was pretty impressive. Right. So we didn't, um, we didn't have much of a backstory. Remember, we're, we're two guys that are coming from playing Dungeons and Dragons. And, uh, and if, back when D&D first got started, I mean, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time figuring out stories. We were moving from dungeon to dungeon, mm -hmm. which is why in the original Shadowgate, you go, hey, how come I'm in a room that's full of cold and now I'm in a fiery room of lava death? Right, right. right. And we would be like, uh, we would be like, um, uh, we'd be like, uh, yeah, you know, let's just let's just put one room after the next. And so here we just said, look, why are you being dropped off in front of the castle? What's going on? How do we go ahead and make a, a really fun story out of it? Which is what we did. So uh, these cutscenes were done by uh, by uh, a, a Chinese artist named Wang Ling. Okay. And uh, he's uh, he's just a good guy. And um, we decided to do cutscenes pretty late in the progress. Pro pro yeah, in the product cycle, and uh, we're running out of money as well, and um, and so uh, this was done by by Wang, um, and uh, just a great job. And then I hired a, a few interns from George Mason University uh, here in uh, Virginia, and um, and they they have a good uh, game design class there that teaches Unity, which oh, is what cool. we're okay. using here. And uh, he went ahead and, and uh, kind of put together these pan sequences that you're seeing. So, uh, so it's uh, it worked out well. Uh, I was I was pretty happy pretty happy with it. So at the end, um, Wang wasn't available, and um, we actually have a sequence if you win the game <clears throat> uh, where you'll see a trailer for the sequel, and that was uh, done by. Uh, an Australian artist um, named Damien Audino, uh, which was which was neat. And then recently, I've been working with a Polish artist uh, named Christian Bishop, and um, he's but he he did some uh, some last minute work for us, especially for Steam Rewards and stuff. Okay. So this skull in the slot. See now, know, last time we were, we were playing stuff with. Is, um, yeah. I think different puzzles because I don't know now. Now this is where I get confused because last time we had to take this vine out here. Right. So this is a good example. So we wanted to start with a room that people recognized, and um, but in the original game you just had this. Uh, now you can see here there's 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 nine or uh, what is it? Uh, Eleven out of twelve skulls that are in there and one that's not. So that's yep. that's your first thing to know that you know there's a puzzle there. Um, in the hardest version, there are three missing, and you need to find all three skulls, and uh, it's much more difficult. But um, here we, uh, we, you took Yorick, which is our wisecracking skull, yep. and um, he's our, our hint mechanism. Um, he also will go ahead and um, not just add wisecracks, uh, but he'll give you um, information that otherwise we might not have get, been able to give you, or we'd have to give it to you in a scroll or a book. Right. Okay. Um, and then during the beta testing, uh, some people said, "Look, he just talks too much," <laughs> and uh, and so we made it so if you hit him, uh, he shuts up. So, uh, which is just kind of fun. So here, um, what I'm seeing here is the the eyes of the warlock lord. Obviously, yep. um, the thing about this was interesting is that. Uh, <clears throat> You know, we're doing a lot of stuff with particles. We still wanted him to appear. But his um, opening and closing of his eyes, just even s small there, is actually um, looking at the, um, at the, the, uh, the, the wave file, the audio file, to go ahead and decide how much to open and close it, which was kind of, kind of a fun thing. So. Okay. Anyway, so uh, you probably want to light a torch at some point here. Um, and... Uh, but you can see that you know we've got we've got particles. Hey, um, go ahead and dump it into um, retro um, graphics mode, would you? All right. I don't remember. It's an F key. Graphics retro. Oh, audio's got to be retro as well. F one. 
Oh yeah, that's right. There is a quick key, isn't there? I yeah, the quick that. key is really helpful because it's fun to it's fun to play in retro mode and graphics mode for a while, but uh, there are a lot of small objects, so it, it is tough. Um, but it's just a neat little, uh, you know, it's just a neat thing that, again, I, I just uh, make sure it's on, on toggle. Um, and it's a filter that we're putting over the camera. Obviously, the camera's <laughs> built in Unity, uh, against both Unity. But uh, you can see that there's just tons of keybinds and settings that you can uh, set for your for your game. But anyway, you can see it there in retro mode, and uh, it's just fun. Um, you know, for we actually remove some particles when you're in retro mode or else um like there's just too much fog and it just right. messes with the with the colors but uh it's pretty neat especially when you see fire you know lit in the room it's like yeah it looks like 8-bit fire so it's fun or you can push out of that whenever you want yeah and this was um very handy as well the f2 like being able to see yeah. what you can interact with for sure yeah that was the october update um so we we shipped the game in august because we needed to get the game out and um, and then we came back and we added the normal mode, which is you know because you know we got some people saying it's just really hard. Okay. Then we put the game, and then we um, added the uh, the the wheel, um, you know, command system. Maybe you could bring that up if you could. Uh, and then we also added the the bit of uh, of being able to select all objects, which was um, which was good because people were just like you know I, sometimes I can't find an object. So if you don't want to use it, don't use it. If you want to use it, it's great fun uh, to use. So, um, anyway. Yeah, and the wheel system is that that's got to be an option, right? Cause... Yeah, yeah. Just go, just go back. Uh, it is. So, what you're going to want to do is um, turn off uh, uh, the retro command system. Ah, uh, is that okay? Uh, and uh, and then you'll get the wheel. And in this case, um, the wheel is only going to bring up commands um, that uh, are in context, right? So it's contextual. Okay. Yeah, and that's actually really handy. So you're not bogged down because I noticed that last time we did play on on the hardest mode where they give you every option, and it's more you know figuring it out yourself as as it kind of was back in the day. Well, I will I will say this for the hardest option in here, it's not a contextual wheel. Anything you want to do with anything right. on the wheel is available. Um, but for this one, obviously, it, it works well that um, you know at the lower levels it is contextual. So. For the corpse is what I'm seeing right now. I can literally only operate something on him, open it, or or examine him. So, ah, oh, good job with that. I was on a Twitch that took forever for somebody to go ahead and figure that one out, but that's good. For which one though? Uh, opening, uh, blasting through the wall there. Oh, yeah. See, like that's. Yeah, some fun bits. Oh, that's right. Okay, grab this arrow. Remember needing like a wooden shield, something like that. To, or wait, no, on easy. So now I just automatically get the arrow. That's different. Yeah, exactly. Ah. And so in the harder modes, how do I get that arrow? But in this one, it's uh, uh, it's lying in the ground again. This is um, you know this is for somebody, especially the game will be going out on the iPad uh, and Android uh, tablets, and um, you know many of those folks uh, we. Just because we came from being, um, and we are currently hardcore gamers, doesn't mean that we don't want to introduce people to adventure games, right? right, right. And so in that case, you know, uh, you can probably see in that room, there's a limited number of objects. Um, in this room, you know, the brazier in the, in the middle is not lit. It's not, a, it's not a puzzle that you have to deal with. So there are definitely... Um, oh, yeah, let me, let me go back there real quick, because I, I didn't even catch that. Okay. So, you know, uh, basically in the normal mode, we re pretty much only give you, I would say 90% of what we give you are objects you need to finish the game. And we don't let, we don't kill you as much. Um, we're just, uh, you know, we were, it's much more forgiving. Yeah, that's, that's definitely different. And like I said, that it actually, and like you were mentioning, Shadowgate was one of those games where it might have taken you 20 some hours to complete it, but once you you know it. That's it's kind of it. Um, this way, I, I do like that. It gives it replayability. You know, the puzzles change. Yeah, yeah, and they're really. It's really pretty fun. I mean, to see the amount of change that the puzzles uh, they go through. I mean, it's uh, it's great. We really started with the hardest one and then worked our way down and said, you know, how could we revamp this? So, you know, you play it once through and you beat it and you're like, okay, I'm gonna try it on the next level. Right. And then you get to that thing and you go. Hey, that's no longer there, or I don't know how to get past that. 
So um, why don't you go ahead and click on York? Maybe you can show people how you get hints. Okay, yeah. I will Are say, you... um, I'm just go, kind of moving ahead here. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good. This I missed, though. Like, the shark? Oh, No shark? No, no, but there's a <laughs> tentacle monster in there. Yeah, yeah. Nasty, but uh, the shark just didn't, uh, didn't cut it anymore. And I do uh, like I that. Um, when you speak to Yorick, how it kind of gives you a warning, like he will start Yeah, the first hits. time. Yep. First time. We just want to let the player know, hey. But um, then we introduced these whole things of elementals in the game and capturing elementals, which is really fun, and work them into the fiction to be the wizard's um, pets, you know, familiars. Uh, so that was a really, a really fun thing, and um, you know, just uh, and just being able to go ahead and bring it to Unity and do particles and bring these rooms to life. Um, we talked early on about making this a 3D game mm -hmm. and um, putting it in, in 3D bits, and uh, we just um, we, we'd seen enough games where you had to um, position the camera exactly in the right place at the right part and to go ahead and see an object and. Uh, that just wasn't uh, the kind of games that, you know, at the moment we were right. interested in doing, you know. Now, speaking of kind of a, a more 3D approach, I guess, did you have any input or anything to do with uh, Shadowgate 64? Uh, that's a good That's a good one. Uh, let's see, i got to figure out how to uh, best answer this in the nicest <laughs> way possible. <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, we obviously had a good relationship with Kenko. They wanted to do a sequel to Shadowgate. They wanted to do Shadow 64. So Carl and I designed a game for it. Uh, for this was for the N64, and um, and they they didn't uh, they didn't take a lot of our suggestions. Okay. And um, they decided to go kind of with a uh, with a, almost a drun dungeon crawl turn based right. movement system. Yep. Yep. And it was a little awkward because at that time there were other games like Turok and other things that were. They were obviously coming out that weren't using that, so it was a little bit behind it, uh, by, behind in its time. Okay. So, um, I mean, it, it wasn't like a, a retro Grimrock thing or something, you know. So it was, it was, uh, it was a little tough. So we don't, we don't talk too much about that game. It was a, it, it was a sad part in our, in our career. Uh, I got gotcha. you. But that was well, a lot of people still seem to love it, though. So I... yeah, yeah, no, and I know that, and, and that's why I'm, I'm hesitant, just because. It wasn't that much fun for us. Doesn't mean it was fun for other people. Right. But then we worked on Shadowgate Rising, and that was a full blown, um, a full blown game where you were, were you know, with the full 3D game, and it was it was a lot of fun. But um, N64 was on the way out, and we were having a little bit of problems with our developer, and so Kemco canceled that. So okay. we hope to bring it back in the uh, as far as the trilogy of these games. I love this music. That one, I suppose I don't have to hit all these. That, that's another change right there. You just hit the one torch? Okay. Yeah, and so um, you should be able to uh, operate all those torches and light all those torches. There, you just did one thing there. Uh, yeah, we just changed this room around. We put objects that you needed in other bits. You know, we were reading up about, and obviously everybody knows this since they were kindergarten, but uh, people... You know, civilizations bury the, the dead with objects, and so that's what we did here, and so you right. can get a bunch of objects, uh, you know, we needed. You know, one of the big things we did was just say, look, we have a bunch of iconic rooms. Just because we're going to change 90% of the puzzles doesn't mean we have to go ahead and redesign all completely Everything. new rooms. Right. And so that's kind of what we did. And, uh, and, uh, and then we made it so that we could add mini quests, you know, uh, if you buy Shadowgate now, you can still get the, the Dread Pumpkin mini quest, which is where we took it to Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and, and made it and Shadowgated it. Yep, we, sh we actually yes. showed that off here like the day before That's Halloween, which was kind of awesome. So here's an example of uh, this room that has uh, that has four, you know, we have four mirrors, but as you go up in difficulty levels, you have six. But, um, you Oh, know. okay, there's, there, there was six? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Cursed. Shadowgate is one of my all-time faves, for sure. You're my best friend. <laughs> I loved it, man. I, I loved it. Like, Deja Vu, Uninvited. Now, so you were you said you just kind of worked on the ports for Deja Vu, or...? Yeah, so J Deja Vu came out in 85, and um, that's when I was starting to work on Shadowgate. And Shadowgate came out in 87. I got hired in 86, 
and uh, 1986, and I worked on Uninvited. Uh, okay. my, I split duties with um, an artist named Mark Waterman, who's an excellent artist. And so uh, I was working on that, and then we finished up Shadowgate, and then worked uh, a bit on Deja Vu 2. We'd actually completely, completely done Beyond Shadowgate, um, and we were working on a couple other adventure titles that didn't go anywhere. But um, yeah, but for Deja Vu, I was primarily did all the ports, and that okay. means. Our, and that means when I say force is it's artwork. So, like the when the PC came, when you know the DOS game was black, you know four colors: black, white, right. cyan, and magenta. And then that was uh, CGA. EGA was you know sixteen colors. V, you know uh, VGA was uh, obviously a lot more colors: one hundred twenty colors, I think, two hundred fifty six colors, something like that. So. Uh, so if I, if, I guess if I could figure out all the ports, it was uh, there were about ten of them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love Deja Vu, and that's yeah. why I wanted to include it in this sale. Right. Uh, Which yeah, by the way, guys, in chat too. Don't forget. Um, and that that'll be tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna be tomorrow on Steam. And um, uh, in fact, if you're a Steam user, uh, you you've got these port these retro games sitting in your folder right now. They just went up. That's where I was at, on with the programmer. Okay. Um, but the great thing about it is, uh, you know, for the next couple of days, you know, not only do you get Shadowgate at, a, at an unbelievably great discount, but yeah. you get these games. So, um, and they're not games that have to be uh, connected to Steam. They're they're um, DRM free. DRM free. Yep, which is really cool. Yeah. So now, uh, now that this is out, I know you, you know, guys are still updating this, working on stuff. Are there any plans to do anything like this with either Uninvited, Deja Vu, things like that? Yeah, you know, um, we talk about it, and um, we do want to do it, but, uh, you know, Shadowgate, uh, it's tough to sell games, man. Oh. And and Steam, there's a million games on Steam, and, um, you know, un unless a game is discounted by 75%, we got a lot of people that have uh, Shadowgate on the wish list, but, you know, it's tough to, to support, you know, when folks are waiting for it to be 90% off. Yeah, it's, it's tough yeah. to support the developers, and we want to make more games. Um, and, uh, you know, we kickstarted... Oh, you've got a pumpkin there. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> um, we kickstarted Shadowgate, um, but that's... Man, that's... Uh, that's a... Just running a Kickstarter is a full-time job in itself, so... Um, I don't I don't think we're going to kickstart another game, and it takes money to make uh, games this large, so... Um, we're concentrating right now on, um, on the sequel. Okay. Uh, we are looking at the other games. We're excited about um, bringing back some of these these retro adventures. Um, and then we're looking at a couple smaller adventure games that we're really excited about um, using the game's same game engine and um, you know try to get them out quicker. So, but but ones that are really excited about we've been developing and it's just fun. Yeah, so, and I do agree though. Steam, I, I feel bad for a lot of developers. It is so... how can I put this lightly? I don't know, it's just, for lack of a better word, it's it's a clusterfuck. Like, it's almost impossible to find anything there. And, you know, like, yeah. so, many, so many great games are getting just kind of buried, and which is why I love doing this, you know, maybe showing off titles people didn't even know were around, um, you know, things like that. It's just, but I... Especially now with the new storefront, all that, it's just, it's nuts. It's really it's hard. Nuts. Yeah, it's really hard, the new storefront. And Valve has been very uh, good to us. Um, but there are things that are out of their control, or right. things that we can't. We launched <clears throat> on a on a on a Friday, um, and it just so happened to be during that during that uh, during that launch weekend. Um, you know, we're really excited. Uh, we're going to get some banner placement, and um, and they had a uh, twenty AAA titles on sale up to seventy five percent off. And you just can't compete with that, yeah. you know. When the top, you know, the top, you know, thirty thing, you know, twenty games are all those things, and it's no different on GOG, you know, dot GOG dot com. Yep. You know, uh, folks wait for that to get really, think, uh, you know, uh, cheap, and uh, and really, kind of the the whole thing started with um, with Apple. Uh, you know, you put a game out on the iPhone or an iPad or whatever, and everyone expects it to be a buck or free. Yeah, yeah. And it's just really hard to um, to to be uh, an indie uh, developer. So um, please uh, support us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. By all, by all means. And yeah, like I said, we're kind of uh, the channel's been around like maybe what about a week and a half, almost two weeks now. So yeah, yeah. we don't have like a huge crowd, but we're building towards that really quick. And you know, to do this again would be absolutely amazing. Just to 
you know, we'll keep showing off the game, do what we can to, you know, help out. I, I would love to, to have you back on. Yeah, and our, you know, Reverb, obviously our publisher, um, has been very good to us. I've been texting right now back and forth with my producer there. And, um, you know, we're, uh, it's, it's a tough landscape to make games these days. It's easier to make games because uh, the tools are all available. Um, but to get noticed is, is rough, you know. Uh, but every now and then a game comes along that um, whether it's a good game or not, um, I won't say, you know, right, but right. there's games that come out that, you know, what what is Goat Simulator? Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly, and, exactly. And um, I'm glad for those guys. Um, I know of those guys, and it's great to get, a, as a small developer, to get something like that, and some things go, you know, I hate the word, but they go viral. Mm-hmm. Um, or, um, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, oh, yeah, you know, right. some games that uh, are doing different things and they just get caught out. They, they get caught up and, and we're hoping that that's what happens with Shadowgate. Um, and that people want to continue to play games that, uh, require, um, you to think about what you're doing and you could play for, for half an hour and then get through, you know, that, that room that you couldn't get through before and take a break and come back to it later. Hey, I just thought of some way to get through that puzzle. Um, a speedrunner of Shadowgate just wanted to tell the developer that his game is awesome. That's amazing, Chris. Appreciate it. Very kind of you. Uh, we were very, we had a great, um, I know I talked a little bit about a Kickstarter. I don't know if anybody is, is on here that was on the, uh, on the, uh, on the as a, a Kickstarter backer, but we, um, and part of it is that I'm a perfectionist and thing, but we just went, we just went crazy. We um, we were very. I must have spent more time figuring out how to get the best swag that I could. The box that we created was like a full like the box that was very cool. Yeah. Have you seen it? The yep. board. I mean, it's yep. like a, it's like made out of like board game material, yep. you know, box. And I've been in Kickstarters where I got just just this flimsy piece of crap, you know, and. <laughs> Uh, we did a card game that was uh, made by um, a guy named Coleman Charlton. He made it with us. He he uh, works for uh, for uh, in, uh, Settlers of Catan, which is a great game. He used to work on Middle Earth uh, role playing games, and uh, and we just kind of went, you know, and, and even now, like you know, when we when we said we we're gonna give everybody a, a game, we we're gonna give them a Mac or PC game. Well, we gave them a DRM free Mac or PC and a Steam key and a GOG key. And uh, you know, we just we just want to let everybody know how much we appreciated the fact that uh, they they supported us. Without it, we couldn't have made the game. Oh, that one How am I screwing this up this bad? Do you remember the suit? Well, of course you do. But the com- the combination here? Yeah, isn't it just on no. normal? Isn't it just hit the first one once? Nah, I don't remember. <laughs> I'd have to look it up. I, the only reason I don't remember is because we've got four. There's four different Versions. modes. Yeah, and I just yeah. don't remember which one goes with which one. Um, can you hear what the updated soundtrack sounds like? Absolutely. One sec. So I th- we talked a little bit about the um, updated soundtrack, which is cool. Um, I don't know if you heard what we we're talking about, but uh, and then I'll shut up. <laughs> but uh, we have about 10 different tunes and Rich Douglas did our soundtrack and he's brilliant and I found him on YouTube just like they found the lead singer of Journey and uh, I I, uh, I talked to him and I said look what I, what I want to do is I want you to create this so that you make six tracks and I can play any of the six tracks together or turn them all off or do whatever and they sound good together and uh so that if I, you know, if I'm in a room and I open up a chest and uh, I'm playing tracks one, two, and three, which is drums and cello and flute, uh, and I open up the the the, uh, the chest, uh, I can hear the, I can bring up a, a choir or whatever, and that's just really cool to hear that. So you can hear as you go in and out of rooms, you can hear them go in and out, and they're and most of them are all based on the nest tunes, which is really fun. Okay.
Hey, what's up, Nick? How you doing? How's everybody in chat this evening? Okay, skull. We don't need skull. Do we need skull? We're gonna take the skull. All right. Whatever. If you want. Mm hmm. Now, would that be the skull that goes in here? I don't think so. Maybe. Is that there? It will not fit. Right. <clears throat> no. No, if you want to try to find that, do you want me to tell you where that skull is? Sure. Yeah, why not? Um, I think it's in the um, in the tomb room there, with the four the four tombs. Uh, okay. And I think it's in the back tomb on the right. Again, if, if you're wondering why I don't know, um, it's just that uh, there's four different uh, solutions, right? Solutions and. Um, Carl, our, our lead designer, would, would know more than more than I exactly which one is okay. he's, he's got that kind of memory, but I'm an old man now. <laughs> I'm not sure where you're going here. I always get so turned around. There we go, okay. So it is in... Yeah, because can't you go through one of these, or no? Am I just freaking out? Open that one. Oh, no. Now we just shut it. I'm not seeing anything. Is, that, is it not in there? Um, yeah, I don't see it on the ground. Let, uh, well, go ahead and open up your inventory. Let me see what you have. So we have the sword. We have a bunch of have you been behind? Have you been behind the waterfall? Actually, no. Yeah, that's where the skull is. Oh. Um... Do you want me to go ahead and look up the, the combination for turning off the waterfall? Is there's a you turn off the waterfall? Oh yeah, it was. yeah that's yeah. what the that's what the gears do. Because um, I thought that ahead. was for the the rope room or whatever. No, it is. Oh, it is in, in one of the in one of the things. It is uh, right. Uh, okay. Okay. So let me uh, let me find the exact um, exact combo here. Bringing up a Google Doc. All right. <laughs> Share it with everybody. All right. Let's see. And let's see. I forget. Did I pick easy? I think I picked easy. You did. Okay. Uh, yeah. Either you're in easy or in your normal mode. Let's see. And actually, you know what? Did I do something wrong with the gear as well? Because what do you use to pry this thing out? Because I remember having issues with this before. The sword? The arrow, maybe? Uh, I think in the one that you're in, there's a, a bar that's in the uh, in the sewer room. Mm, okay. Let's see here. I wonder if I mess that up. Because then I have another gear. I don't remember where. I thought it was just to put it. No, never mind. Never mind. Um, trying to find that. Uh... All right. Why don't you try this? Hmm. Um. One, uh... one place. I'm not so sure that that's it. Oh, that's how we shot the arrow. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, have I been over here yet? Aha. Oh, I don't have the, the special torch. Bless yeah, hit the, hit the middle lever once. Is it the middle one once? I... I hit the middle lever once and the right lever twice. Let's try that. Try that. I'm going to text Carl to see what's going on. <laughs> okay, the last one doesn't move. It's stuck. Right. Oh, alright. Ah, we got it. I don't know how, but we got it. Something worked. 
Uh, All right, let's head. Let's head over to the waterfall room. And that was. Oh, we'll find it eventually here. Was it to the right? Right. I think this is right. Yes. Uh. So I'm still 20 seconds behind. Are you seeing the, the waterfall yep, we're, stuff? We're through the waterfall, which, yeah, this was totally different before. So those gears control um, all the water throughout the castle. And there's a number of different places where there's water. Uh, so okay. uh, anyway, that skull should have a symbol on it, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, skeleton, there's a... Is there a skull in here? There's no skull in here. There was a, a skeleton, but no, no skull. Huh. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess uh, in this mode, uh, you don't need to get this that that first skull until later in the game. Okay. Yeah. Good that's, thing in the game. It's definitely a, uh, a a different addition as well, like the spells. Right. And there are, you know, there are, uh, you know, right now you could click on uh, your, I can get a hint here. Um, if you've used all the hints in this room, he gives a generic hint that will help push you to other parts of the game. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. and the, 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 uh, the tab uh, inventory thing was, was fun and it worked really well. We're pretty happy about it. Now, if, uh, I forget because the rope room is past the wind, like the the mirrors, right? It's through that door. Which room? Um, like the room with the the rope and the um, like bottle. I think that I need. No, that's uh, that's down below the mirror room. Okay. Oh, that portal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Or the um, yeah. Go to the wrong place. Let's go back again. Flame from this candle barely flickers. I thought. No, nope, that's not the special torch. Do I even need the special torch? Maybe not on. Not on this mode. Yeah, not on this one. You don't need the special torch. You can get rid of the uh, the shadow wraith on your own. Uh, with any torch. With any torch. Okay. Yeah. Nice pumpkin. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we went through that that whole quest uh, when it came out, which was actually really really cool. Did you Did you finish it? Yep. Yeah, it was just a fun uh, little thing that we did, and you know, we kept talking about different ways that we could do. You know. And we were hoping that people would catch a bunch of the, obviously a bunch of the Peanuts references. Oh, of course, and, yeah. like, Bag of rocks and, and other things. So uh, just a fun, again, just a fun thing to, to, to put together. Uh, we talked about doing one uh, maybe for Christmas with the Grinch, but I'm not sure if we're going to do it. Oh, that'd actually be cool. So there you went ahead. You didn't need a special torch. Oh, there's another pumpkin. Look at that. Who knew? There we go. Okay, now we open this. There we are. Oh, this is different. This so you'll notice on the ground there is no, um, there is no uh, cloak, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, because it's not is... needed in this level. Okay. And here the water is all low, because you don't need you didn't need to figure out how to get the water from high to low. So. And even with that that grate, I noticed we didn't have to pry it with anything. It just opened. Uh, I think you could just I think you just hit open at this yep. point. Yeah. So again, uh, something later you have to do, but uh, not not in this particular um, easier or casual mode. Yes, you can stop the water in the, in the lake room by changing the uh, the gears. Well, here is another example. Uh, the obelisk is uh, happy and working because the power to the uh, to the castle as part of the castle is on in this mode. In other modes, other difficulties, it's not on, which is the whole thing with the, the putting the thing in there. So. Here, you're going to go ahead and call Lachmir, and Lachmir is going to give you some info, right? Okay. Now, the obelisks are pretty much like the, the story scenes, right, for the most part? Yeah, right, right, right. So 
There's a couple other uh, scenes that don't require uh, you talking to Obelisk, but this is where Lackmere comes to you in a spectral form and gives you some info. Um, done by a great uh, voice actor that we found, and uh, just uh, again, Rich did all the uh, all the the music for it and sound effects. He's a great, great sound designer. Um, that's another thing about this game. If you want to have a lot of fun, play the game without music at all. And uh, it's creepy as all get out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So I suppose just a little, maybe a little more atmospheric, so to speak. Or right, just, right. Uh, yep. And, uh, you know, from some of our uh, people that uh, where English is not their first language, uh, it, is being, it is being translated as we speak into six different languages. So that'll be pretty fun. Oh, wow. Okay. Death. Yeah, the standard ones, Italian, French, um, German, Spanish, but then also Swedish, because uh, the uh, NES game was very popular in Sweden. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay. And uh, also into Dutch, just because we found a Dutch guy who just wanted to do it so bad. We said, let's do it. Um, Shadowgate on the NES was one of the first games um, to actually uh, have a Swedish version. Um, why they, why it had a Swedish version, I don't know. I never found out from Kemco why they decided to go ahead and do it uh, for the people from Sweden, but they uh, they did, and so uh, huge following of Shadowgate in Sweden. Really? Okay. Who and, knew? And I was actually going to ask that: Were there any territories? And I think you kind of just answered that, but where this was more popular than in North America or anything? Yeah. So Sweet, Sweden and Germany were really big, but uh, surprisingly, the the one um, territory that was not big was Japan. Really? Uh, part of that was I've read some stuff on it, and part of it was that uh, the game was translated into first person. So instead of saying uh, you pull the scroll, you put the scroll in your satchel, it would say I put the scroll in my satchel, and players didn't like it. No, oh, weird. So just kind of interesting. But it wasn't as uh, popular in Japan, considering the fact that it came from Kemco, which is a Japanese company. Right. Yeah. Huh. That actually surprised me. I, I figured. Well, I don't. I actually don't know the Japanese market on like adventure games. If that's Big uh, there, that's not really. really RPG, isn't it? Right. And you'll freeze the lake. Everything's coming together. Uh, you can't freeze the lake. Oh, oh, I can. You're 20 seconds behind. <laughs> 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 You're evil. There you go. <clears throat> I do remember just back in the day though, that was my favorite. I, you know, think kids and sharks and whatever. This was always one of my, uh, my yeah, favorite yeah. deaths. This was a fun thing we left in because um, we just liked the idea of using the elementals, you know, and and uh, and there's my evil laugh I just heard. <clears throat> uh, and uh, we just liked the idea of this, um, and then getting the orb back. But actually, the uh, and I, again, I know I'm ahead, but uh, did you already go to the skeleton? Yep. Yeah, I'm on him right now. This is my favorite um, graphic, and I'll tell you why. You're gonna be too young to this uh, for this, but um, when I was a kid, uh, NPC that does model kits um, put out a number of models, and one of them was uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, based on the Disney ride. Okay, yep. And of course, we're talking the '70s here, right? And uh, these were, if you ever look them up, look up Pirates of the Caribbean model kits. Hey, you kids out there, don't forget to look up. <laughs> and they were just the best kits out there. They had, they had like... Uh, a, now, were these a, similar to the ones, too, with, like, the old Frankenstein kits? Like yeah, old, yeah, 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 very okay. similar. But if you look them up, they're great because they were like uh, like a guy who was called, like, con, you know, condemned to chains forever. And they're like a okay. skeleton, you know. And they had this thing called action, I don't know what it was, but it was a rubber band that you would put around... A button and then it would like the the skeleton's arm would go up and down with a sword and try to chop oh, cool. it down. okay and they were just these great and i always found that was our this was our homage to that we just thought that that was brilliant we just loved those games you know you can still find the the games out there or the models out there but uh you know they're 300 bucks or something oh, yeah i bet i bet but just great great fun time so uh anyway that's why we put it in there we did a lot of homage stuff in here so um, oh, so now this is sorry. I'm jumping all over the place here, um, but to, okay. The the flaming bridge room because I didn't get the cloak, so I don't need to put the water. Do I just walk right, across? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. So the difference for that puzzle, especially the there are different um, there are different ways to uh, 
Oh, you haven't saved the game lately, have you? It has, has an actually, auto save. Actually, I, I actually have not saved for... It, it has auto save in it, so you, you wouldn't go back to the beginning or anything. It also has auto load. Uh, but you can also just hit the quick key and quick save it. But uh, So we have auto load, auto save, quick save, and then you can just save the game on your own. Uh, but this was uh, this was a, this was one where we just said, look, in this mode, you don't have to do anything with the the cloak. And uh, okay. you know, later on, in, in some of the other harder modes, you need to figure out what to do with that cloak. I think somebody just linked in chat. Was that what you were talking about? Um, what's that? I just dropped a link in Skype. Oh, yeah. Let me look at that. Yeah, Is that hard vest. Yeah, that. That's one of them. That that was ho uh, hoist the high the Jolly Roger. Just so there was a little rubber band that went to his arm, but that was uh, that was just great fun. Oh, I suppose for the little sword swinging action and that's yeah, pretty yeah, cool. the sword swinging action. But those those were just the it was the best time to be a kid, man. I just and you you know you buy them for a buck. Right. Oh, so, really? Okay. Yeah. Now those um, are those things that you you know you wish you still had. Yeah. Um, play, yeah, play dead. Okay, the Drake, how do I... Sword? Maybe the sword? I don't even know. But like I said, this is honestly a really fun bit for me because, uh, you know, we played on, like, hard last time, and this is totally different. Oh, yep. That didn't work. Uh, uh, uh. You do not. Yeah, stand. here's uh, here's another one for, for you guys that are uh, that are looking at it. Thanks so much uh, for that part. There's another one. Just... Just all you did is just pulled the guy's arm off over and over and over oh, again. That's <laughs> kind of awesome. So um, you know that was fate to the mutineers. Oh, oh there's great. the condemned to chains for everyone too. Oh, that's is that it. okay? Where'd you find that? Just uh, hit the hit the button over or click on the picture again. I think it's right before the one you linked. Like if you just hit over to the left. Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire scene model kit with the new concept of zap oh, action. Okay. This this was a good one too. You gotta look at this one. <clears throat> this was great, and it's a huge image. Oh, just great. Look at this one, everybody. <laughs> you have to do this. Look at that one. That one. Oh. Uh, that one's brilliant. That, that one didn't work. Dead man's raft. So what you do here is you just open the lid, and he would come out and show you where the the treasure was. And uh, these were all skeletons. You know, it was kind of like Jason the Argonaut type stuff. Okay, right on. But uh. Great, great fun. All right, there you go. All right. Well, man, 1972, right there. 72, yeah. A little bit, about five years before my time. Yeah, and that link was busted, but, you know, whatever. Okay. What link was busted? The one I just posted? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. The action figures with action. Yep. That is cool, though. All right, are you telling me that this image right here is busted? That one right there. Let me try it again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. What? Yeah, 404 not found. Varnish cash server. I don't know. I don't know what's up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing over oh, there. Oh, just uh, copy paste it. The clickables just busted. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just leave it at that. Here. Here's the here's the box cover for it. Maybe you can see this one. Here. Can you see this? Aha! Now we're on to something. There we go. Yeah, Dead Man's Raft. That's actually pretty cool, you know, especially for, for back then, too, with the little animated... Um, yeah, that's that's pretty slick. Yeah, yeah. I actually do remember that, though, the old um, the Disney ride itself. Yeah, it was. Uh, they've updated it, obviously, since then, but... Uh... Oh, weird, it works on the phone. The link works on the phone? Yeah, yeah let me see. It's a full-scale image of it. Oh, okay. Awesome. Great fun. Indeed. All right, man. I don't want to keep you all night. We will definitely have to do this again, though. Um, right. Maybe show Sounds off good. some some deja vu, some something, uh, maybe some yeah. uninvited, whatever. But, uh, yeah, we should definitely schedule something again. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And, and again, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, look forward to the sale tomorrow. Hope we don't get crushed by some AAA title that's uh, mm. on sale 99% off. Oh, no, I'm just... Um, when especially but, right um, now too. What was it like in the last week? I mean, just it's it's too much even as a as a gamer to keep up with sometimes. Yeah, it's just a lot of a lot of stuff. And Steam Greenlight, you know, um, just brings in more stuff. And you know, it's good. I'm glad the indie developers get in there. It's just right. it'd be great to be able to uh, you know for folks to find you, especially when you spend 
couple of years of your life, you know, working yeah. on something up. So absolutely. All right. See you guys well, later. Yep. Thanks so much. Anytime. Let us know what we can do to help out, and we'll be all over it. Buy the game. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care, man. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Another another awesome developer. And yeah, go support this. Like I said, Shadowgate. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, the game's going to be on a huge sale tomorrow. And if you already own the game, uh, should be updated to include DRM-free versions of Deja Vu and Classic Shadowgate, which is amazing. And that's going to go out with all the uh, the versions that you may pick up tomorrow as well. Yes, go buy it. But guys, I am going to take a quick break here. Um, give me about 20 minutes to set some stuff up and um i do believe it is simulated tournament time yeah monkey what we're going to start doing too though for interviews like that um just to get it a little more publicity as well we're going to start uploading to our reverb games uh youtube channel obviously stuff like this will be highlighted if editors want to help me out with stuff like that like just kind of cut interviews um you know like uh, having Eduardo on or uh roman from uh, Amplitude Studio, stuff like that, but we'll we'll make them more accessible. And obviously we'll have Dave back. That was a, a great, great session. I, I love kind of just, you know, it, it, it's a lot like what, what I did back at uh, Destructoid. Yes, they're interviews. Yes, we want to ask the important questions, but, you know, it, it devolved towards the end to talking about awesome old models and such, and that's 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 my favorite thing to do. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely have them back. Um, and then, like I said, yeah, twerk break. I just, I have to get some stuff set up, uh, a few banners, uh, a few things, but Stay tuned. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we just host somebody, I guess. Yeah, let's host somebody. We should we'll do some hosting. But yeah, give me about 20 minutes to shoot some stuff out here. And uh, yeah, sim tourney time, guys. Who can we host? Who needs hosting? We do, actually. Yeah, reverb. <laughs> reverb so needs hosting. Can we host each other? Host myself. Um. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, God, no, they're doing this, though. No, no, I can't. Legend of Dungeon, a uh, couple of my favorite uh, people in, in the development scene. Robot loves Kitty, but they're they're doing it with the Oculus, and it makes me want to puke. <laughs> oh, Nekobun, Smash Brothers, bam! All right, watch some Nekobun while we take a quick break. And, um, yeah, I will be right back, guys. Hang tight. And thank you again, uh, everybody, for coming by tonight. Like I said, we are in our growing phases. We're hoping the channel blows up. Um... But, yeah, you guys, uh, we're not going to be able to do it without your support. So thank you for all the follows. We are actually only about 70 followers away from our first milestone, which will be an extended, uh, basically, viewer's choice gaming session. You guys pick the games. I play them. We have some fun. We'll give away some stuff and some things. But it's almost tournament time, so I will be right back, guys. Hang tight. Enjoy Knuckle Bun. And, uh, yeah, thanks again. <laughs>